My name is Elizabeth Picciardo. I'm 41 years old, and I'm calling in from Burbank, California. How long have you lived in California for, Elizabeth? Well, I have been in Los Angeles since 2019, but in the state of California since 2017. I lived in the Bay Area for a little bit and then moved down here. Nice. And what do you get for work out in California right now? I am a uh, esthetician, and I also am a uh, freelancer for a skincare company, and I am a comedic actress, and I do voiceover work. So... Never a dull moment. And so how much you make a year providing skincare services? Uh, I would say that it's more of like a side gig. So it's under $10,000 a year. So it's probably closer to maybe like $5,000. It's it, like I said, it's not my primary in- source of income. Okay. So what is, what is your primary source of income? Is it the freelancing work or is it the uh, actor side? It's like freelancing work. And well, it's probably going to be the acting side, but the acting side is, um, it's, uh, well, we all know everybody's on strike, so it's a little slow right now. Um, and I also do voiceover, so it's a combination of the two. And then also the freelancing, that is that is mostly my source of income. Okay, and freelancing, how much you make a year would you say from freelancing? <laughs> I would say that is probably close to about uh, $25,000. Okay, so 25000 from the skincare stuff, 25000 from freelancing, and how much from the acting and voiceovers a year? Obviously, right now with the strikes, it's a little bit slower. Yeah. So it, it's kind of tough to gauge, but probably from the year before, it's probably uh, just a little under about 15000 Okay. So combined income, we're in the $50,000 range then. Does that sound about right? That 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 must have been a good year. This year's a little bit rougher, but uh, yeah, that, that's, pre- that's pretty close. Yeah. That's uh, pre- Probably pre-tax. Yep, pre-tax. So pre-tax around fifty. So in the state of California, you're kind of walking away with about forty thousand dollars after taxes. It looks like. Bingo. Does that sound about right? That sounds right on the money. No pun intended. Okay, so that means bringing in net take-home pay about thirty-three hundred dollars and some change every single month. If we're basing that off on a forty or forty thousand dollar year. A net take-home pay. Living in the state of California, that's not a, not a cheap state to live in, is it? No, not at all. No. And how long have you been doing, I guess, freelancing, the skincare stuff, and, and acting? Um, well, I've been doing the acting since I've been here, since 2019. And then I've been doing the uh, freelance work. I actually just started doing that this year. I had a full-time retail position uh, for about uh, just under two years prior to that. Okay. So you did full-time retail, and then what made you jump into the freelance world? Um, well, I wanted to have the option to be able to travel, and it gives you the opportunity to do that and also experience different um, cultures and different neighborhoods. And I loved being able to go into you know, uh, a new one of our locations where our accounts are held and experiencing the guests that are over there. And um, I also like the flexibility in the schedule because of a lot of the castings and auditions that I do. Um, It just helps to have much more of a flexible schedule to be able to accommodate to make that successful as well. Um, And also, it, it, you know, it gives um, a lot, it gives me um, more opportunity to grow in my skincare, in my skincare world. As a long-term career goals, obviously you're doing three kind of different things. What's your long-term career goals? I would love to get on to a sitcom and um, eventually a, f- a feature film doing voiceover. Um, I love doing animation, so um Probably, uh, I mean, my my ultimate like right at the top of Pike's Peak would be um, getting a voiceover role for our Pixar film. Awesome. That would be a great, great goal. So how would you define your current financial situation if you had to on a scale of one to 10? One being horrific, 10 being best of the world. Two. A two. And why, why would you rate yourself that? Um, because I'm living paycheck to paycheck and that's ridiculous. And how long have you been living paycheck to paycheck, would you say? I don't recall a time when I'm not. 41 right now. So you've been, did you go to college? I did for a little bit. I didn't, I didn't finish. Um, the only thing that I completed was my esthetician course. 
Um, and then I attended community college pursuing uh, business psychology and um, also uh, theater. And I ended up walking away from that because I had a business that I was owning with my mom and it took a lot of time to get to do that and I actually was not pursuing what I really had wanted to pursue when I was going to school which is I, I really wanted to get into pre-med um, but I you know it's one of those moments where it's like oh no I, I could never do that it's just a don't believe in yourself kind of a, a moment it was just m more the less tapping into um, you know my m what what I was brought up around. I was always in and out of the hospital. My dad had a lot of medical issues and my mom worked in the medical field. Um, she doesn't anymore. She actually is a uh, assistant vice president of commercial lending. So she went from preserving people's lives to helping people finance their businesses. So go figure that one out. Um, so I, you know, I was always raised around the, you know, the, the medical world. And I was just, I mean, every time I opened up a medical book, I was, I was just, it's like, you lost me. I was like, don't try to talk to me. I'm totally engrossed in this book of anatomy. Um, but I just never believed that I could make a career out of it. But I've always had the acting bug in me ever since I could turn on the TV. I don't know what genre you're from, but I, you know, back when you used to have to get up and punch the you know the buttons on the tv to turn the channel there with a remote in fact a remote i was it was it was almost like the time when we had the phones that were attached to the wall and you had the really long i had a friend that had like the longest cord you can take the phone from in the kitchen in the living room and sit on the couch and i was like on sky nine i was like i'm using your phone and then we got the portable phones and then i'm i'm like guess what I'm standing in my yard talking to you. Now it's like, I mean, I could pick up my phone and, you know, walk out and, you know, and I'm down in my car and it's like, you know, we don't even take that for, like, we take it for granted now. So it's, yeah. <laughs> so you, you wanted to pursue medicine, but never believed you could really make a career out of it. So kind of went through community college, studying psychology and theater, but then left that for uh, the family business you're running with your mom. Did you take out any student loans for community college? No. No, no student loans. Okay. And I guess so that was when you're probably about, I'm assuming in your early 20s. So it's been about 20 years since you kind of went to community college. And you said you're in retail prior to your current jobs you're working right now. What were you doing the previous uh, 18 years or so? Um, I was I was working as a barista at Starbucks. And then I was also working in retail. And um, I was a bank teller at one point. So just, you know, I was, you know, trying a little bit of everything. But the one commonality was I was always doing something in retail. Yeah. Okay. So you did a lot of, a lot of different jobs, it sounds like. Yes. Um, and your financial situation for the last 18 years, where you say you've been living paycheck to paycheck for majority of that time period? Yeah. And what have you done, I guess, to educate yourself or kind of learn about money over the last 20 years? Um, well, I'm not very good at saving. Um, I don't really, I mean, because I, 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 for a period of time, lived, you know, a lot of without of my means. Um, that's why I don't have any credit cards right now. Um, my credit score, I, I did, yeah, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to go there. Um, so I, I can't even get a credit card. Um, I usually have to have a co-signer um, whenever I have to, you know, like get a car, sign a new lease for an apartment. Um, so right now I've, I mean, for the past probably couple under five years have been in the coming, I want to say the coming to Jesus moment and recovering, but it's like what you can do in five seconds could take you 10 years to get back. And that's, kind of the position that I'm in right now. And because I lived without of my means, um, I'm now just having to kind of like pay that back and, you know, get myself in more of a stable situation. Yeah. Well, good. Well, I'm, I'm glad, glad you found me and found, found the show. And I'm excited to have you on here because yeah. that's the point of why I started this is I want to help people like yourself not live paycheck to paycheck, not feel like um, you can't have fun in life, can't enjoy life. Obviously there does come sacrifice to getting out of debt and staying out of debt, but at the same time, it's attainable because you look at anyone in the world and you say, I, I can't live within my means. There's probably someone that makes 20% less than you in your same zip code. And right. they're figuring out how to do it. But there's also ways that you can figure out how to prioritize spending in your life to stay out of debt and also still spend money on things you love. So mm -hmm. let's talk about that. What are your current debts you have right now? Um, I would 
say it's my car is the biggest. Um, and then uh, I, mm, I would say some uh, personal debt from money that I've had to borrow. Credit cards, I mean, I don't, I don't have any, so I don't have any credit cards. Okay. So car loan, what's the total balance on that car loan right now? It is $27,000. Oh, wow. So that's a nice car. What, uh, what kind of car is it? It is a Jeep Cherokee Laredo. This is the third Jeep that I've had, and um, it is it, it was the Jeep that I dreamt of having ever since I was 16 years old. So getting it, it was like a like oh my gosh, I cannot believe that this has happened. <laughs> so it's it, it's it it is a great car. It's a it's a 2012. The reason that I had um, it's that a 2012 it, and it's a 27 thousand dollar loan on it still. Yes, because I had to bring over from a previous vehicle. I had a balance left from that. So I had to bring that over, unfortunately. I uh, I made a mistake, and I got a W, and I had the residuals left over from that um, put into the debt for this. So that's why. And you rolled over debt from a previous BMW. From a BMW, yeah. And how much... Did you roll over from that previous BMW? How much underwater were you? Where? Uh, that was eighteen thousand dollars. What was the price of the the Grand Cherokee? It was twelve thousand five hundred. It was twelve thousand five hundred, but then you took out like a thirty thousand dollar loan for it. Essentially, combining both of them together. Uh, the total was actually yeah, it was close to it was about twenty nine, twenty eight, twenty nine. So it was it was it, it was like twenty eight thousand something. Um, I haven't been able to pay down much of the principal because I had to take a huge hit in not being able to um, pay the contract amount consecutively or on time uh, because of being out of work due to everything being shut down for the period of time that it was um, and not receiving the um, same amount of income. So I had to take a huge hit for a period of time. That's the other financial situation that I am still recuperating. Okay, so this car... I guess just to make sure I'm understanding correctly, you had a BMW. Yes. Rolled over eighteen thousand dollars worth of debt from that BMW into yes. a a personal loan or a new loan for twenty nine thousand dollars to buy a twelve thousand dollar car. So you essentially bought a twelve thousand dollar car for twenty nine thousand dollars. You have about twenty seven thousand twenty seven thousand dollars left on the loan right for that Grand Cherokee. Yeah. And your car payment is six hundred and ninety five dollars a month, correct? Yes. Do you know what the interest rate on that is? Um, it is, I think it's 14%. 14%? Yeah, my credit score is, I told you my credit score is not very good. It's very oh high. Oh my, I can see why there's been no progress made on this. I mean, you got a $700 a month car payment making $3,300 net take-home pay. I mean, that's basically a fourth of your net take-home pay is going towards that. And that doesn't include insurance or gas. The insurance what? is actually not that bad because I'm a good driver. So. And I guess, yeah, $117. I've seen worse insurances. I have priced it to $200. So, yeah. So why did you get rid of the BMW? And when did you make this car purchase? I made the car purchase in 2020, February of 2020. Um, and that is because the BMW was literally sucking me dry. It was. Yeah, even I know you're probably looking at this saying, "Well, this isn't doing any better," but it actually it it has it, it has done me better. It did in the beginning, and then when I had to take the hit, um, because I was able to make the payments before. In what kind of BMW was this? Um, it was. I'm just trying to understand how you're underwater eighteen thousand dollars. I'm curious. That's what I'm just trying to figure out. It was at three twenty five. Um, I'm trying to think of uh. It was like, um, it was just a, this, just like the, it was just a coupe. What year was it? Um, it was a 2016, 2017. And did you, did you buy that new or? No, it was used. What did you buy it used for? How much? Good question. <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember. I think it was, uh, 20, 22,000. And then how much did you sell it for? Um, they, it was 2,000. They gave me 2,000 for it. 2,000? 2500 yeah it was had a lot of mileage on it um there was a lot of body damage um okay that so that's where that's where the issue you ran into is i was trying to figure out how you're underwater eighteen thousand dollars but yeah if you buy a car for twenty two thousand dollars you had it probably for what a year or two i had it for three years yeah three years okay and you probably paid that loan down from 22 i guess you paid that loan down from twenty two thousand to twenty something thousand yeah, and then had eighteen thousand dollars left on the balance when you sold it wow okay yeah that's not not a fun sight 
to uh, to seeing that's why financing cars can leave you upside down in a heartbeat in situations like this when it it takes all your money with repairs or things that have issues and then find yourself losing selling a car for twenty thousand dollars less than you bought it for three years later and then you're yeah it's, eighteen thousand dollars in the hole. It's quite an you know like you know being able to actually be open and like say it is like a little challenging for me because I'm like I'm really not this stupid and I just um was just I I got caught up in materialism and I should have never gotten the vehicle to begin with um and it was yeah it was just it was um it was one of those decisions that I made based upon emotion rather than being you know logical about it Matt and that's Frankly, you're not the first person that's done that, and you're not the last. I mean, the the world's built off emotion, and we have a trillion dollars worth of credit card debt in America right now, and car debt is majorly built off emotion. People want to get the nicest thing in the world. They want to impress the neighbors, and they buy something that they think they can afford today. Something happens, and they can't afford it. Or in your situation, stuff happens to the car, and then they find themselves upside down. So the average new car payment is 700 and something dollars a month right now, same situation with both credit card debt and car loans. A lot of people buy material things that they don't necessarily need and find themselves upside down or find themselves just drowning paycheck to paycheck because trying to impress other people and getting caught up in the world of materialism. So um, it's not worth for, it. Thank you for that I, background. I know that now, you know, but I wish I knew that before I forked over, you know, the plastic card or the, you know, God handed the keys, you know. So, I mean, I'm, I, I do not regret getting the Jeep, but um, the BMW absolutely 110% do not. I, yeah, that was that was a very, very poor decision. Yeah. So we have other debts apart from the car loan. You said you have personal debt. What is that for and what's the amount on it? Uh, for personal debt? Yes. That was to help me get yeah, flying above, and that was um, that's under ten thousand dollars. That's probably about close to uh, seven thousand dollars. And what's the monthly payment on that? Um, uh, that person is giving me some time to get back up on my feet before I can start paying that. And we're gonna figure that out in about five months. We're gonna revisit it, and then we're gonna see where I am financially and work out how much I can afford monthly to pay down that. Debt. Okay, okay. So you have a little bit of time on that. I do. Which is good given your current financial situation. We'll kind of talk about how do we, if you have five, six months to do that, how can we improve your financial situation in the next five to six months so you can start paying that debt down too. Um, but we won't talk about that initially at the gate because let got a, got a little bit of time to figure that out. Um, but credit cards, you don't have any credit cards right now. What happened with previous credit cards and credit card debt? Um, a lot of it just kind of wiped away. Um, and some of it, I just, I just paid it off. And how much did you have in credit card debt at the peak? Do you remember? Oh, I want to say that was probably $12,000. A couple thousand dollars. Okay. Well, I'm proud of you for not having any credit cards right now, even though you said you couldn't get approved for one right now. But if you've ever had credit card debt- I'm glad. I'm like, thank you. Deny me. <laughs> if you, you, you shouldn't even be applying- no, I'm not. I'm not. No, 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 no. I, I, I should, I should have, I should have ran over that. I'm not even because it dings it every single time. So I'm like, if we can say that it any way possible, should stay away from credit cards if you ever find yourself carrying a balance, paying interest on it. Because again, people use that as a crutch, and they use it, or they use it emotionally, and start shopping on Amazon late at night, and then rack up credit card debt or whatever it might be. Um, but credit cards in this situation, given your income and current debts and car payment, let's let's stay away from those for, for a while. It's like someone with living intolerance. Stay away from wheat. Exactly. If you have a spending problem, stay away from credit cards. That's and, right. And uh, so what are your current assets you have right now? Bank accounts or retirement accounts? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. So I see you ended August 4th about $2,000 in your bank account. Is that your only bank account that you have or do you have any other assets apart from that? Um, I also have one other bank account, but there's, it's, it's like I have it just so that I have, because the bank account that I have, that's the um, financial institution where my mom works and we don't have access to that out here. So I opened a bank account just so I would be able to have easy access to like the ATM and uh, making deposits, you know, Somebody is going old school and gives me a paper check and I have to deposit or, you know, to put in cash if I have to put cash into an account. Um, but that there's there's really nothing in that right now because I primarily utilize the checking account that, um, that you see. OK, so if we have right now between the different debts, we got about thirty four thousand five hundred ish in terms of total debts. We've got two thousand dollars in assets. 
which puts your net worth at a negative $32,000. Um, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel like I just want to walk away with my tail between my legs. <laughs> um, that's, uh, that's not good. That's not good. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not a, a fun spot to be in with a negative number, but you're still young. You've got plenty of life left in you. And that's what we want to talk about today is how do we, how do we change the script on this? You've been living paycheck to paycheck for the last 20 years. How do we kind of figure out your financial future moving forward and get out of this so you don't feel trapped and feel, um, so you have the ability to retire and you have the ability to enjoy spending money on things, things that you like, because right now you're living this way till you're 65, 67, you're going to be hoping and praying that social security rolls around when you're 67 years old. Frankly, I don't want you to be in a position that you have to be fully depend on social security. That's not a fun spot to be in because we don't know if social security is going to be here in 20 years. Correct. So that means when you start, start taking action and creating a plan today. So, um, okay. So current financial situation, just went through all assets, went through all bank accounts and have an understanding of that. So let's talk about more about your childhood and upbringing. So you said you grew up with parents, uh, your mom was in the medical field. What did your dad do for work? He worked uh, in the airlines. So he was an associate publisher for Air Cargo. Um, he worked for several different airlines. Um, the last airline that he worked for, he passed away in uh, 1996. So his uh, last job was an associate publisher for um, official airline guides, which they closed their doors in 2016. Um, he also was a bit of an entrepreneur and tapped into several failing businesses. Um, but he always had that entrepreneurial mindset and I inherited it. So, um, but, um, my mom and I had a cookie and granola business and I was the baker. Um, and, uh, we, we do not have that anymore. Um, but that was the business that she and I had together. And then she also dabbled in some you know in home sales kind of things you know like pampered chef and she did a line of jewelry for a while um i did did you do mary Kay or one of those other mlms yeah we did mary Kay for a little bit and um and then we, yeah did you ever make any money with mary Kay? did she ever make money with mary Kay? negative we walked away with a lot of laughs though we did yeah it was quite a comical situation like that was great <laughs> i enjoyed the fresh fruit platter and the dip that you made for some of the events you know no limbs are they sound great they sound fancy but you only make money when you get other people to sign up and spend money and it's just a never-ending cycle and never a good idea because they never they wave the nice cars in front of your face and then they do this and that and there was a story i heard is like i guess with mary Kay or one of those it's like if you hit a certain threshold then they'll essentially pay you an extra five or six hundred dollars a month for you to go out and lease your own Cadillac or BMW. But the issue is you fall below that tier, you stop getting that paycheck, but then you're still locked in that lease for however long. And uh, that's just, it's a bad, it's a bad cycle. It never ends well. It is. It is. It's terrible. And we also, uh, my mom did a vitamin company called Starlight and there was a celebrity endorser for that. So everybody was all about him. Um, and that was too much money in that and got nothing. Um, and then uh, there was a, a in-home uh, telecommunication system thing that my mom and dad tried to do too. And then they tried to do a chocolate business. And um, actually, the one thing that could have potentially been successful was um, I was actually born here in Southern California. We lived in Palos Verdes. And my dad, while working for Tiger Airlines, also uh, got into the restaurant business. And essentially, when he got into it, he wanted to just be like the financer and then have, you know, somebody else run the restaurant. But unfortunately, that didn't work out. So um, long story short, my dad was managing and owning a restaurant and working full time for Tiger Airlines. And um, the business was called Pioneer Chicken. And um, we were actually, he uh, actually had a couple of uh, celebrities that would come and utilize the back when we had pay phones to call their agents. And uh, one of them actually happened to be Michael J. Fox. And he actually featured the restaurant in his documentary that he did on um, Apple TV. So I was like, yay, that was one thing that my dad did that was somewhat successful. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's, I, you know, that's, that's kind of what I grew up with. So it's like, my family went through like where we were like living like top of the line, like, you know, 
was staying at, you know, great hotels, um, you know, not even questioning how much to spend on clothes for me. And if I wanted a Barbie, it was in front of me before I could even say, I want that Barbie. Oh, there it is. Um, to, okay, so it's back to school shopping. Let's go to Farm and Fleet. And at Farm and Fleet, you could get back to school clothes and equipment for your tractor. So you definitely experienced the roller coaster of a ride, seeing your parents get involved in some of these different businesses, some of these different MLMs, and I mean, heck, running a restaurant and working full time while your dad was doing that's not an easy feat because restaurant industry alone is doing that full time is not an easy industry to be in, and yeah, let alone run have run one and be a full time employee at some other place. So definitely saw a lot, I guess, growing up with with your parents. Did um. Did your parents teach you much about money growing up? Or did they ever talk about money? Uh, my mom tried to a little bit towards I mean, my dad was always the one that, because he was 25 years older than my mom. And so he was always kind of like getting on her about, you know, spending money and going out. And she'd be like, but I saved 25% on this. You know, and my dad's like, well, you could have saved 100% had you not gotten it. So it was kind of like... <laughs> Was it really kind of like an educational moment? It was more or less of a like, oh, that was funny. Oh, mom, you got yourself in trouble again. Um, so it was like, you know, go shopping, hide the shopping bags. You know, it's kind of like you know, in um, crazy uh, rich Asians, and she used to, uh, um, she would shop and then she'd hide all the shopping bags from her husband, that kind of thing. Yeah, except she could afford to do that. She was just hiding it because of a pride issue with him. So. But it was it was kind of like that. My mom would always kind of hide when she would go shopping, and um, so it, the, I I would say that there were times where my dad tried to teach me to save my money, and then um, and I did have a good amount in my savings account up until I was able to, you know, when I was eighteen, and I could, you know, and because I decided not to go to college right away, um, I was utilizing the funds for things that I probably shouldn't have been doing so my thought process for savings was not where it is today and yep. uh would have been better i'd be in a much healthier financial situation had that been the case makes sense what what would you say your biggest takeaways growing up and i guess in your parents marriage manage their money um but your biggest takeaway and financial lessons from watching them spend their money manage their money of, over the years um well i would say that um they they were not on the same page and i recognize that now um but you know i mean my mom is definitely where my dad was today um but i would say that um i would take it as like a learning curve as far as like how they manage their finances for myself going forward and learning from their mistakes um And um, I would say ultimately just I need to focus more on being able to build up assets and savings and it's been really hard. I think learning from, I mean, that's what this show is. I want to talk about my mistakes. I want people watching this to learn from other mistakes mentioned and talked about on the show because just because I make a mistake or you make a mistake doesn't mean people watching need to make that same mistake to learn that lesson. They can learn learn from mistakes of, of other people and learn from successes of other people too and um that's how how you learn without falling yourself so let's talk about your your current monthly expenses um that you sent over so right now look in front of me we have rent and home utilities you have rent is 1950 and home utilities about 217 dollars a month yeah um the your total housing expenses is about twenty one hundred sixty six dollars are you i'm assuming living by living by yourself uh other than a Bangle cat, yeah. Your rent right now is fifty eight percent of your net take home pay, which is not a a low number by any means. Nope. How long have you been in this apartment for? Three years. <laughs> Three years, okay. And have you looked at other places in in the area or to try to find cheaper stuff or try to find roommates or you kind of just stayed in this spot and, and don't want to move? Correct. I know California is not cheap and it's not not a cheap place to live at all by any means, but when we're talking about how do we kind of, I, I can see why you're living paycheck to paycheck and feel like you're living paycheck to paycheck when you have rent taking up 58% of your net take-home pay. I mean, between that, between your rent and your car payment, I mean, we're we're spending more money than we're making in a month because we got 2166 on home expenses. And then on the car side, we have 117 for car insurance. We got $700 for the car payment. We got $300 for gas. I mean, that alone is... 
$3,278, which is, I mean, you have $60 left over each month and that doesn't even count for groceries. So if we count for your $400 a month in groceries, we got $3,678 in expenses, bringing in $3,300. You're operating a deficit out the gate and we haven't even talked about entertainment or shopping or any of the fun things in life. So my initial reaction is key areas need to change in order to figure out like a plan for to get out of debt and not feel like you're living paycheck to paycheck forever. And the biggest line items on your expenses right now are, are your rent and are your car payment. And the car payment, there's not an easy way to get out of that right now because you're upside down on that car. You have a Jeep that's worth $10,000, I'd presume, if you bought it for 12 and a half, and you got a $27,000 loan on it because you're upside down on your BMW. So you can't just go sell that tomorrow and be out of the car loan. Some people are in a situation where they have a $30,000 car payment, but they can sell their car for 35 and they can clear that debt off immediately. In this situation, you can't do that. Um, so the two biggest things you need to get rid of or lower right now is the car payment and the rent. On well, the flip side is how do you make more money? Um, but frankly, look at this. I'm, I, I feel how you're living right now because I, I can understand that being overwhelmed, feeling like you're at a two right now because, because of this. Um, it's not a, a fun spot to be in. It's also right now your situation is not an easy spot to get out of. Right. Have you, have you looked at getting roommates or moving with other people to be able to lower that rent payment at all? That's it. No, no, and I'm not. I'm not in a situation where I'm. I'm open to doing that. I. I had a an issue that um that happened when I was living in Florida, which is where I was. That see, living in Florida was that that same thing where it's like that was a waste of time, and it's like I had a horrible roommate and a very very bad experience from that. So it's like I just don't even want to go down that route. I don't want to invest my emotions in anything like that right now. And I also am not the type of person that. We'll just live with someone just to have a body to pay the other part. I, that's just, that's not how I am. Um, so it's just, it, it's not anything. I, I've said my next roommate is either going to be, you know, my future husband or it would be my mom if she can, you know, be out here a little bit longer. But she's not in that situation where she can move out here. I have a special needs brother and um, she needs to stay in that state for for him and then also she's got her job that is it's not she doesn't work to pay her bills she works well yeah to pay her bills yes is one of the reasons but she's very passionate and loves what she does yeah i mean that makes sense not wanting to have a roommate frankly i mean i i it's not a a spot you necessarily want to be in uh i'm just trying to throw out some different options that like yeah but that's like, what part of California are you in again? Sorry. I'm in Burbank. So I'm, okay, up, I'm up primarily Burbank. in this area because a lot of the studios and, you know, where I do, um, you know, the filming and then my uh, sound studio that I sometimes work with, they're like right here. It's, just, it's a very easy commute. Um, and um, I also love that it, you know, it's near where I can go to, you know, the, you know, when I when I have to, I don't like going downtown Los Angeles um, for work, and it's and then I, you know, can come home to someone or some, someone. Well, yeah, but the cat, no, to a place that's more like a like a like a community, um, like a suburb, not so much like a city. Yeah, yeah, because I'm looking and trying to find places to rent. Just on a quick glimpse, I don't see anything in Burbank that's under thirteen hundred dollars. There's stuff in East Hollywood and Hollywood and. Um, some of those areas that are twelve hundred to thirteen hundred dollars, and if you could change your living situation to save seven hundred dollars a month on rent, frankly, that would change your financial situation a lot quicker than not. It's it's easier said than done. It's just because of my credit and everything. Like I'm better off just kind of staying here because if I then I have to you know run my credit again, and then it's like it's just it, it would be much more costly for me to leave and then to just and wait until my income increases. How would it be more costly to leave? Obviously, I guess there'd be some moving expenses with that. But if you're saving $700 a month, that's $8,000 a year that you'd be saving if you save $700 a month. Then... It's true. Um, but it's also some of the areas that are a little, like, um, I, I know that you're you're pulling up and you're seeing some of those, but um, sometimes when you show up at those properties, they're unsafe. They're, um, like, literally inhabitable. Um and they're in uh, neighborhoods that are just, I mean, if I come out the next day and my car's still there, I'm very lucky. Um, 
but it it's it's it, 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 I it's it's a little bit more complex and time consuming that I really yeah I it's it's just not something that I want to venture into at this point. I don't know anything about this area, but it's next to Burbank and North Hollywood. And there's ones for for fourteen hundred dollars, um, but. I'm just trying to throw out options because that's that's your biggest line item right now, and it's. I get it. I I appreciate it. I I um, yeah. Because I I I have I have looked at some other things, and it, and then you get there, and then they say, oh no, actually, and then it ends up being more than what I'm paying right now. Because I looked at a place that was actually over in Toluca that had said that it was sixteen hundred, and then they're like, oh no, you've got this, and then you've got that, and then da 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 da, and it's like. Okay, so then it ended up being twenty two hundred dollars, and then the other one that had said that it was eighteen, then it turned out that it was twenty three hundred dollars. Definitely don't want to be going up the rent. The only thing that we need to be doing with rent is going down. And um, I mean, in order to improve your financial situation, dramatic changes are going to have to happen. And again, the two things, two biggest line items right now are the car and the rent. So it's yeah. figuring out where you're going to give on some of those. What are you going to do to try to get out of those situations? Um, so that's just something I would, I would emphasize to explore. Um, I, obviously I can't sit here and force you to move. I can't force you to go to a cheaper apartment or one that's not as nice of amenities or whatever you might have or as big, but from looking at your budget, looking at your financial situation, that's definitely one of the areas that is the, that's easier to change than the car payment is. Oh, I, I understand. I understand. So we'll keep, we'll keep going through the expenses. So 3678 is what we had for total necessities right now between rent, auto and transportation, groceries, and then you have about $75 for entertainment, 25 for gifts, 12 for fitness, 150 for personal care, 200 for shopping, and 125 for pet. So that brings our total expenses to $4,265 when you're bringing a net take-home pay of $3,300. So that means we're operating in this situation at a deficit of basically $1,000, $900 and some change is kind of what you laid out in terms of your budget to how much you're bringing in. So definitely you're going to continue to feel like you're living paycheck to paycheck and waiting for that next check to come in to make the bills. Um, let's see if that lines up with, with your monthly spending that you sent over to me. Because um, I have your, your bank statement in front of me, kind of go through deposits and withdrawals. So in the month of July, we started the month of July, July 6th with $143 in your bank account. We had $7,171 in deposits and credits. That's higher than what you typically bring in. And then withdrawals was 5000 The loan that came through. Yeah. Okay. That was a loan. And then we have withdrawals, 5374 So expenses a lot higher. So we ended the month with $1,900 in your bank account. So let's go through these and see what are some things we can not be spending money on. Costco, we have $14 at Costco. We have, it looks like laundry. I'm assuming you're going to a laundromat for laundry. Uh, we have uh, those are unit. Yeah. Okay. In the apartment, in the complex. We have more Costco for $16. We've got beverages and more for $28. We've got more laundry, more laundry, more Costco. Target for $43. You know what you bought at Target for $43 on July 7th? Probably mostly. Buy groceries at Target? Yeah, I buy groceries at Target. So we got three Costco trips and a Target trip in the span of two days, it looks like. Um, spending $80 on groceries. Do you, do you cook at home much or do you eat out a lot or mix nope, or both? Never eat out. Never eat out. I always uh, cook for myself. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Should not be eating out right now with uh, with this debt situation and a lot of laundry on here. There's more $2 payments. Whole Foods, Costco gas, $5, $7, more laundry for $8, more Costco. If you're at Costco every other day, you got Target for $13. You're going to these like, I mean, this is, there's like nine transactions for Costco and Target in the span of a week. Why don't you make a list and go once a week? Um... <laughs> Because I always like to get out, so I don't always get everything all at once because I don't always, it's like I take for granted the fact that I'm like, oh, well, I'll just go tomorrow if I forget anything or if I have time, you know, and now I, I will say things are changing. I'm getting a lot busier when it comes to work. That's why I said as my income increases, because it is looking like that, I'm um, receiving more um, time with my freelancing hours. And then also I've been booking a lot more castings 
So um, like yesterday, I was just on set all day. Um, so it's like things like that are starting to pick up. So I'm, you know, I'm, 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 yeah, obviously we can only plan with what we have in front of us, but I know going forward that the income is going to increase. But uh, so, yeah, it is, it is getting to the point where I do. And I have had other people say things to me too, because it's just, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I mostly, it's just like, I, I, you know, I, I do a lot of, you know, work from home as far as like with my talent and stuff like that, you know, doing self tapes and then, and, but then it's like, I have to get out. I, 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 I cannot stay in the apartment all day and it's like I, I have neighbors that literally they'll sometimes it's almost like they're coming out of the dungeon they're like oh what day is it and it's like oh my gosh every day I have to get out um so that's I mean it, it is part of my issue is that I just I always I have to get out and I I go to Disneyland quite a bit too I'm, I'm all for getting out of the house especially if you're working remotely and at home and living by yourself but typically I mean I feel if you go to the grocery store 10 times in a week you're gonna spend more money going 10 times a week because chances are you're going to be hungry one of those times or you're going to start buying stuff that's not on your list all those different times and it's going to kind of uh, go a lot faster. So, I mean, my wife and I, we go once a week on on Sunday, get what's on our list and, and we go home. And um, if I went to the grocery store three, four times a week, I can promise you I'd spend a lot more money because I'd see different things that'd catch my eyes. I'd see cookies or cupcakes or chocolate or whatever it might be or um, and start spending more money. So that's definitely something I would suggest in regards to that. But then also you got to figure out how you can get out of the house and not go spend money. So if you're trying to get out of the house, it should be going doing things that do not cost money. It should be going walking to the park. It should be going towards the beach or whatever it might be. Um, but using your escape of getting out of the house, go swipe your debit card at grocery store is not going to help you out in your long term as well. So if you don't make it. Okay, let's see what else we have. More sprouts. Okay, more grocery stores. You like going to all the different grocery stores and Whole Foods. You got the day. See, I can eat it. You just hit, hit every grocery store up in the in the week. It looks like um, <laughs> we got for, <laughs> for somebody else. Spend somebody else's money, but utilize you know my energy to. I have boundless amounts of energy, so it's almost like oh, let's go shopping. If you want to go shopping, go go sign up for Instacart and go be an Instacart person. Oh no, I've done that and. So those people who place those orders they are crazy they want like 25 gallons of blah 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 blah. they want this they want that and then if you so god help you god get that wrong you are like you're out your tip like you've just wasted four hours of your time so i no, i'm done with that like if i do personal shopping it's like a friend or a family member they're like oh come on you know but when it's that thing it's it's kind of like dude you want this done that way you do it yourself you know i i tried it I was like, forget it. I was like, you go get your own groceries. I can't believe you're having me do this for you. I'm like, no, uh-uh. So I see um, on here, Peacock TV. Why are we paying for Peacock TV? Oh my gosh, haven't you seen it? It's amazing. Oh, it's great. Um, I uh, watch a lot of shows on there. I um, I, I, I don't have a, like a streaming cable or anything like that. I don't have any just like, um, like I don't know, like direct TV or whatever. I just- Is Peacock your only streaming service that you pay for? No. I also have Disney Plus. I have uh, Discovery Plus. Trust me, my mom and I have worked out the finances. It's a lot cheaper doing that than it was what we were doing before. Because we we uh, we do it together, so we share. So it's not just me. So I I don't pay all of those. She we split the cost. So you you got Disney Plus. You got Peacock TV. You got you said uh, Discovery Plus. I mean you don't need all the pick pick one and and be done for now. And then when you get out of debt, then okay, let's start allocating more money towards it. But you you live paycheck to paycheck because you're you have six different streaming services right now. I'm I'm not. But here's the thing: I'm not paying for them. My mom is. We're splitting them. I see Peacock on your thing right now. Yes, but she she puts money back in for it. Like she she knows that it's it's under my my card, but she replenishes the finances for it, or she picks up the tab on something else for me, and then we just break even. With she pays for Netflix. Does your mom know your current financial situation? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she does. She's 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 the one who does the uh, the co-signing for me. Um, she no no she's yeah she's uh she's probably more aware of my financial situation than I am. I like to live in a land of um, rainbows and unicorns, so sometimes I just avoid it. <laughs> you you can't do that. You can't you can't live and ignore the reality that you're living in. It's kind of like I mean if you if you don't sit down and look at what's happening every single month and where your money's going, then you're never gonna. You're always going to feel like you're living paycheck to paycheck. But like you need to set up a plan. You need to have a budget because it, it forces you to be intentional about where your money goes and it forces you to be intentional about 
what do you like spending your money on and how you spend it. And you're a lot more aware of where your money's going. But right now, it sounds like, I'm assuming don't budget your money. You don't track your spending um, with any platform or Excel spreadsheets right now, if I had to guess. And you're kind of just ignoring it. And if you continue to ignore it, it's never going to change. I mean, Tom, Tom Brady didn't wa just wake up one day and go win a Super Bowl. I mean, he had a rigorous plan that he followed every single day, day in, day out. And same thing with your money. If you want to get out of debt and you want to build wealth, you're not just going to walk into winning a lottery ticket. Lotteries, one, you'll never win. And two, that's just not how it works. You're not going to just, loan company's not going to call and say, hey, we forgave your, your car loan. We don't want our $700 a month at a 14% interest rate. And unless you decide to make a change and decide to be very intentional about your money, it's, it's never going to change. So what, what's stopping you from setting up a budget and start budgeting your money every single month? You. Use the answer. Oh, I'm sorry. You're stopping yeah. yourself. Me. 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 The funny thing is, is that I am organized and I am very like, you know, everything has its place. I'm very OCD um, about so many other things in my life. But when it comes to my finances, it's like the complete opposite from everything else in my life. Like if you were to walk into my apartment, if you were to, you know, look in my apartment, you'd be like, oh, this girl has got it all together. And then you look at that and you're like, so I would say change that. You have you have the well, you have the mindset of being organized, have the the capacity to do it. It's like let's take action. I'll, I'll send you some resources and stuff to what I use for budgeting. I mean, it's it doesn't take but twenty minutes a week really of your time to set up and automate and just change categorize some stuff to different better. But that way you look back and you can look at your month of July and say, Oh, I didn't know I spent five hundred dollars on food or I spent Six hundred dollars on this. We're really expecting this to be four hundred dollars, and then you start figuring out. Okay, next month I need to be a lot more aware of this, and I'm going to track this every single week. I'll check in on Sundays, see how much money I spent the previous week, and that's going to kind of dictate how much money you're going to spend that that week. If you're not aware of it, you never know where your money's going. So um, yeah, I'll send you some resources on on what I use for budgeting and some different tips on that. But uh, it's definitely Perfect. something you have to be intentional about, otherwise nothing's ever going to change. Well, I mean, it's like as you're going through and you're, I'm like, ooh, I guess I didn't realize that I was doing that. So it, it is. And um, one of the things that I, you know, that I uh, was doing for a period of time that was helping me, um, and I don't know why I stopped doing it, but it's being cash. So then you see, you know, whereas I mean, you keep swiping the button, it's like you, you don't really always keep track of it. Um, so I, I think I'll probably have to just at the beginning of the week say, okay, here's this amount of cash. Once it's gone, you're done. Like that's that's your extra money. Don't don't you can't like you know. And then you're more. You can follow what's called the envelope method, and you put aside hundred bucks a week for an envelope for groceries, for gas, and have that dictated. And once it's gone, it's gone. And that'll help you be a lot more mindful. And you're not going to be spending that money on a left brain. You're going to go to Costco and Walmart and or Whole Foods and. I don't go to Walmart. Let's make that clear. I do not like. Sorry, Target, Browse, Whole Foods, Costco, you gone, I think, 10 times in the first 10 days of the month, um, if not more. So you'll be a lot more mindful of that. Yes, absolutely. I have a lot of other, we got more Target, I mean, more Target, more Target, more Costco. I mean, four transactions in one day at those two different places and Whole Foods. You went to all of them in the same day. You got Sprouts the next day and Costco the next day and Whole Foods the next day. I mean, you, you go to a different grocery store for every meal, it looks like. We got your... Your water bill or power bill it looks like. We got food for your your cat. We got more Costco. We got more Whole Foods. We got more beverages and more. Twenty eight dollars. We've got Tan Lines Burbank. What is that? Uh, I got rid of that. That was a tanning membership. I do not have. Good. I was gonna say if you're paying a monthly fee or you're going to get spray tans or whatever it is right now, that needs to needs to stop. Um, it's not necessary. No. Sprouts for $76 on July 20th. Were you having a party? Um, Sprouts is, they, uh, I get supplements from there. So like my Omega. So then if, if that was the case, I probably got the uh, supplements that I get for the month. And so that was probably my probiotic, my Omegas, and then my multivitamin. How how frequently do you do your laundry? Um, Every day. Is there a reason for that? Yeah. I, uh, I have a bit of a OCD issue with having dirty laundry sitting in my basket overnight. I, I don't like it. I go swimming every day, so I usually have like towel and bathing suit in there. So I have to I was confused because I just, this is not in your budget, but on the statement, there's 41 transactions for your laundry in the month of... Uh, yes. Wash laundry loves me very much. Yes. Yes, they do. So I'm going to add that into 
add that into the budget as well right now. But they do like you a lot. Um, they really do like because it's, it's. I mean, your transactions right now there are a lot of small transactions. I mean, most of them were between two dollars and ten dollars. But I mean, there's 15 pages of transactions, and if you have 15 pages of transactions, it adds up to that five thousand one hundred and thirty-one dollars. I think it was that you you spent last month, and majority of that it looks like is a lot of the transactions are Costco and grocery stores and this wash i'm trying to figure out where some of these bigger transactions are um got more whole foods more target for 30 dollars. serious xm why do you have serious xm it's in my car it's my radio cancel it don't they have radio out there in california it's 11 a month you can get back right there oh the radio out here is not very good what's not good listening to the radio or being in debt I mean, you gotta you gotta make choices at some point. And Sirius XM is not a necessity. You can get Sirius XM when you're out of debt, but right now we have a problem where your income is lower than your expenses. And would you rather move or would you rather cut Sirius XM? Granted, I would do both, but Sirius XM is one that you can cancel tomorrow. And yes, will it not be as high quality of radio compared to the normal radio? Maybe, but it's something that you can act on today or tomorrow. And uh and start lowering some of your expenses. Okay, so this is some of the bigger transactions. See, okay, we got more more Costco, more Costco, more Target. Again, the same day, three different times, $11, $12 transactions. Then we have $820 transfer. What was that for on July 31st for $820? Um, it was to pay for a uh, a bill. I can't remember what bill it was, though. But yeah, it was to... Is that the car loan because i don't see a car payment on here um no it wouldn't have been for that um <laughs> it might have been um you know what i i don't remember i don't remember which is yeah which is because i'm sitting here and i'm thinking with it it might have been was not good for a transaction that big yeah well it might have because my mom sometimes will utilize my account to transfer things over so she, it might have been like a hub that she was using for something for herself has she pulled 820 dollars out of your account to pay for her own bills well she probably it was probably because i had borrowed some money previously until i had some money come through and that might have been with that one okay and so she was paying herself paying back. her back yeah and then we okay then we have your rent payment oh, yes. Actually, no. Yes, that is what it was. I had to utilize her money for a uh, car payment and then also for my uh, water bill. And that's what it was. And she that was the balance. That was for both of those. So that, yes, that was her taking that and putting it in her account. Yeah. Okay. And then we have what well, looks like your rent on July 31st for 2249 but I thought your rent was $1,900. There was a previous balance from the month before. $3,000 of the 5100 right there. And the rest of it is... Frankly, just small transactions of Costco, Target, washing. Do you have an Amazon Prime account? Uh, my mom does. Yeah. Probably only have two transactions on here for Amazon. And it looks like you bought something and you returned it. But I was going to say Amazon is uh, is one that gets a lot of people and that needs to be canceled if you're paying for that. But if you're on your mom's account, just delete delete the login info, never log into it again. Um more Whole Foods for $30. We got Sprouts for $53. We got Costco for $24. I mean, I, you're spending more than $400 a month on groceries. I can promise you that right now um, between all these different transactions. Um, well, some of the transactions at Target were going under like clothing, which is, you know, shopping. So that's part of what that is. And then others are, uh, you know, like essential, you know, like toothpaste, milk. Um, cereal, that kind of stuff. If you had to guess, how many times you swiped your debit card at Target, Whole Foods, Costco, and Sprouts last month? How many times did you guess? 35. 35? It looks like 71. We have, when I just do a find on the statement, we got 22 for Costco, and these are all individual transactions. We've got 27 at Target, 27 transactions. Some of those are refunds, it looks like. A few of them are. Maybe uh -huh. five of those. Um, so we'll count it 22 at Target. We have eight at Sprouts. We got 14 at Whole Foods. So consider some of the refunds at Target, about 65 swipes last month going to those different, four different grocery stores. Seems a little bit of excessive. It sounds like we could probably cut out some of that. And by consolidating that into one trip a week, that should save you, help you save you money because you're not going as many times and you have right. a plan going into it. And then you're not buying unnecessary things. But I mean, that's part of the reason. I mean, if each of those transactions are $15, some of them are 50, some of them are 70. I mean, that alone is at least $700 that you're spending a month on groceries when right now your budget's saying 400. And so that's being a, a one person 
you should not be spending seven hundred dollars a month on groceries. Uh, my wife and I combined between eating out and groceries spend about twelve hundred dollars a month. Is us going out to eat multiple times a week, and we can still do that. We spend probably a hundred dollars a week on groceries combined, and then the rest of it we spend eating out because we like enjoy doing that. Sixty five swipes in a month is just not a. It's not going to help you. Um, going that many times. Let's see what else we have on here. Um, Whole Foods Target for seventy two dollars. We have a what is a DL DLR monthly payment? Do you know what that is? Is that a Disney? You're you have a Disney subscription account, Disneyland subscription for seventy five dollars a month. I signed up for that when I had um my full time retail position, which I no longer have. I signed up for it when I was in a financial state where I could afford to do it, and I can't get out of. I can't cancel it. No, you can't cancel that. No, I've already tried because I'm like, because honestly, I see now that it's like, because they, they, it's, um, even for, it's for, uh, Southern California members. So you get cut off when they have peak season. So I can't even access the park at this point. It's like, what am I paying for? So I'm with you on that one. I am a hundred percent there with you. Yeah. And, and it's, it's ridiculous. I will not be renewing it when it comes out i'd be like no when is it renewing february uh it does say disneyland annual passes are non-refundable and non-transferable can you go ahead and tell them that you're canceling it so you don't even have to think about it again uh they won't they you you can't cancel it they won't they'll keep debiting well, I mean, me. I mean, at least tell them please do not auto renew this turn oh, auto they, renew yeah. on no 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 they they won't auto renew you have to go in and renew it yourself no they won't Okay. Yes, please. That that does that needs to be off as quickly as possible. Okay. So seventy five dollars that needs to be coming back to you as quickly as possible. And I mean, Target for seventy two dollars on August second. I'm not sure what you bought there, but you also went to Whole Foods the same day and spent twenty dollars. So eating out needs to slow down. But this is what I have a question about. Chanel, one hundred fifty six dollars on August second. What are you buying at Chanel? Nothing. That was my mom. So your mom is spending your money. There should be a deposit for a hundred and uh, hun- like a hundred and something that came from uh, or a transfer from her account into there. So that I don't. I I just I I went in there and I got her stuff and then she paid me back. Okay, I don't see the transfer. Must I mean this is the second to last day of the statement, so. She did this in August. She put the money back. It was in this one. So you're probably not going to see it on that statement. I was going to say, if you're, if you're spending $150 on yourself, then that's... No, I, I'm a little... I, I might be a little delirious when it comes to seeing how many transactions I do at Costco and Target per month, but I'm not delirious to the point where I'm going to walk into a Chanel boutique being in the financial situation that I'm in and spending that amount of money there. No. Good. Okay. But then we have on August 3rd, we got Whole Foods for $26. We got Costco for 38 We got Target for 42 So, I mean, that's $106. Another another transaction on those days. And then we got the next day. I mean, you used to do this every day, it looks like. I mean, like, like I said, it was 71 transactions. But August 4th, again, you spend $30 between Costco and Target. And then how much are you for your cat? Are you going in there like every week and buying stuff? There's like six different transactions on here for the month. I, she, she had an issue where she was keeping me up at night. So we were getting supplements for her for that. And it was going between, okay, this isn't working. That is working. Um, So now we're a little bit better and she's fine on her food. So you're not going to see those as much anymore. We had a medical issue. So some stuff, I mean, the transactions aren't big, but I mean, I was just curious because there's six. Um... Uh, some of them also, she gets, uh, and she has these dried minnows that I get her. And so I was I was ordering them on Amazon previously, but then I saw that the store had them and it was less expensive for me to just go and buy them at the store than it was to order them on Amazon. So, I mean, looking at your budget, I mean, the 50, 50 100 that went out of your bank account, 5,300, sorry. Out of that 5,300, we had 820 a mom pulled. We had 156, you said you paid you back for. So we're still going to be sitting around $4,300 in expenses last month. Uh, we had you read that had a little bit of back pay on it. Well, I guess that didn't include the uh, the car payment. The car payment should be added back into that because that was removed. That wasn't on, on this transaction list. But I mean, you're spending over $4,500 a month right now between all these different expenses. And that's not sustainable making $3,300. And the issue is, which what I'm, I'm excited for you, you said your income should be increasing with these different opportunities and you need to be hustling in terms of finding new gigs, finding new clients, finding new opportunities. But that doesn't mean you can ignore your money now just because your income is going to be increasing. Because 
even if that's you, why, yeah, no, yeah. no. Because even if your income is increasing, if you're not intentional about your money, you're not tracking, it's going to go just as quickly as possible. I mean, it's, it's called it's called lifestyle for a reason. People go from making fifty to hundred thousand dollars a year, and they twelve months go by, and they're like, I still am not making money. I'm not saving any money. And it's because they're not tracking anything. Well, and you're not changing your habits. Then you have to change your habits. I mean, it's it's just like coming out of a broken relationship. Unless you correct something that's within yourself, you're going to get yourself right back into that same broken relationship because there is something within yourself that. Because you can only control and change yourself. You can't change other people. And your financial situation can change, but unless you change your habits, you're going to be living paycheck to paycheck. So, I mean, I could be making $250,000 a year, and unless I change these habits, I'm I'm still going to be living from, you know, paycheck to paycheck. I mean, I think it's like about 50% of Americans making over $100,000 a year say they're living paycheck to paycheck. And so it's not about your income, it's about how you spend that money. Obviously, having a higher income allows makes it easier to not live paycheck to paycheck, but lifestyle creeps real and if you're not intentional and you understand that you need to change your habits. And some of those habits are not going to the grocery store and swiping 70 times in a month. Some of those habits include figuring out a plan to increase your income more with new gigs, new opportunities. And when that money comes in, that needs to be going towards paying off, paying off this car loan as quickly as possible. Um, that means changing habits and instead of going to the grocery store to swipe your your card for getting out of the house you're going to find a local park that you can walk in that means instead of consuming netflix or peacock tv let's start finding free resources on the internet that can help you learn about budgeting learn about saving money learn about um getting out of debt and start educating yourself a little more and you got to really drastically change a lot of your habits because you're spending a lot more money than you can afford right now. That's why you have a seven thousand dollar personal loan that you had to take out from a friend this this month to be able to even afford rent. And um, so we have a car balance of twenty seven thousand dollars that hasn't gone down the last few months because or the last few years because right now you're living paycheck to paycheck, not tracking your money. So um, I mean, right now, biggest keys for you, the biggest things that you can change in the short term is tracking your spending so you can cut your grocery expenses down. You need to be really tightening your shopping budget. It should not be $200 a month. It should be $50 a month. Your pet, trying to get that down as low as possible. Obviously, get her the basic needs and medicine and stuff that she needs. Um, personal care, $150 should not be that high. Entertainment, really shouldn't be spending any money on entertainment right now. I mean, we got a car payment that's $700 a month. That's $18,000 underwater. Every dollar should be going towards that because you're never going to be able to breathe without getting out of that. I mean, a 14% interest rate is astronomically high for a car loan. And every single dollar you can save needs to be going towards that because that will free up a huge portion of your budget when you can get that paid off. It's not going to be an easy road to pay off $28,000 in car loans. That's a $700 payment. I mean, I'd be throwing hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month at that to even make much traction that you can visually see with a 14% interest rate. Um, but things have to change. Rent. I mean, again, I know you, you don't want to live with another person. I know you don't want to move, but that's the biggest line item right now that make a drastic change. You can get that down to $1,500. You can get it down to $1,300. I mean, that's $400 to $500 a month that can be going towards paying this car. And um, dramatic things need to need to happen. They need to happen fast because you've been living like this for the last 20 years. And I don't I don't want you to be living like this the next 25 years until you start receiving Social Security. I don't want you to wake up when you're 60, 65 years old and just be carrying a, a car balance year over year, buying new cars and adding eighteen hundred or $18,000 just rolling over onto it. Um, wake up when you're 65 and still in this position because Social Security is not going to cover all of this and some, I mean, we don't know if Social Security is going to be around that. The beautiful thing is you have time. You've got years and years to still enjoy life, still get out of this. And it's not like we're sitting here talking about you have $200,000 in student loans, $50,000 in credit card debt, and all this that is insurmountable. We're at $34,000 of debt. That's not that's not great by any means, but mm -hmm. it's not hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt, which some people are in. Um, but we do have a spending problem. We do have not being intentional about it. And we do have categories in your budget that need to be need to be fixed are you are you familiar with the different ways to pay off debt the avalanche method and the debt snowball so i guess in your situation it really doesn't matter because we have a personal loan that's i mean technically i guess you're gonna have to figure that out in five months from now um but the avalanche method is you pay the highest interest rate loan first the matter of the balance and so if you have a credit card payment debt that's 29 percent interest rate and you have a car loan that's five percent you'd pay the credit card off before you pay the car loan off the amount of the balance Debt snowball is pay the lowest debt first, uh, balance debt, and then the next one, and then kind of work your way up, start getting momentum. 
Um, granted, that, you only have two different, that's right now between the personal loan and the car loan, and the personal loan is not making monthly payments right now. You need to be focusing fully on the car loan and also need to figure out what are you going to do when that person asks you to start paying them back five months from now. Right now, I mean, my my suggestions to you, I mean, what I would do if I was in your shoes is like, one, you need one, you need to get on a plane and you need to start budgeting your money. Um, if you're not tracking every single dollar, if you're not aware with all your expenses, I mean, you didn't know you swiped your card 71 times at all those different grocery stores last month. And if you're not aware of that, you never know where your money's going. So that's that's step one is set a budget and it's needs to happen now. It doesn't need to happen when you're making more money. It needs to happen now. Number two is looking at options for, for your rent. I don't know when your lease is up, but $1,950 a month is a astronomical 58% of your take-home pay. And that is one of the biggest line items that you can change. So it needs to be looking at how can you lower that? Are there apartments that you're comfortable living in that are safe that um, fit your needs, but they're not the ones with the sparkling gym and the sparkling pool and everything else are ones that you can live in comfortably and be safe, but can cut your, your budget down every single month in terms of that. And then besides that, every single dollar needs to be going towards this car loan. You need to be hustling. I mean, all right now, obviously you're essentially doing, working three different jobs in regards to freelancing, doing the, the skincare stuff and doing some acting and voiceover stuff. Um, but how can you, how can you scale any of those? Can you find a full-time job that pays you more? Can you find a full-time job that's paying you 50000 or $60,000 a year? I would probably go try to find one of those, frankly, instead of probably scaling three different ones. Continue doing these, but if you can find a full-time job paying you $60,000 a year and then do acting or do one of these on the side still so you can have additional income, that's going to make a drastic difference on your future and on getting out of this debt because it can give you a lot more income to do with it. But right now, if you're focusing on three different things, it's going to be very difficult for you to scale one of these to the moon because you're kind of splitting your efforts in three different areas. Um, so trying to figure out how can you increase your income the most, and it might be looking and finding a full-time job that can pay you a higher salary. Yes, there's going to be more constraints with it. You're not going to be able to travel like you said you wanted to working freelance, but frankly, right now you shouldn't be traveling and you shouldn't be doing those types of things because you are living paycheck to paycheck and you have a car loan that's a 14% interest rate. So I'd be looking at full-time jobs that you can get paying you 50 to 60 plus thousand dollars a year. And then what are these other three things that you enjoy doing? Is it acting and you're making $10,000 a year? Is it the freelance stuff that you can do on the side still? Um, and it'll use all of that additional capital from the job and the side job to start paying off this debt but your situation it's not it's not pretty right now because you have a negative net worth of thirty two thousand dollars but it's also not a debt that is insurmountable because it is thirty two thousand or thirty four thousand dollars it's not hundreds of thousands of dollars and it's not credit card debt that's at a 29 percent interest rate it's a personal loan that's currently not being paid for a few more months and it's a car loan that's not a pretty interest rate it's at 14 percent, but it's not as high as, as a credit card debt so um, I'd probably put you in, in the ballpark of, of a two um, in terms of your score from one to 10 right now. But your situation can improve drastically by budgeting your money, cutting unnecessary expenses, and really figuring out a plan on how to cut some of these different expenses out and increase your income with a full-time job or scaling these three different um, jobs that are working right now. So, so what questions you have for me? Nothing at this point. I mean, I feel like I've, you know, I've gotten more clarity as far as like, because I, 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 honestly, I was not aware of how many times I was swiping my card at Target and Whole Foods. And I, I think that realizing that and um, utilizing cash opposed to doing that is going to help tremendously. Um, I think that uh, the income increase uh, is going to help a lot as well. Um, and uh, as far as the car situation goes, yeah, I'm just going to have to focus on paying that down at this point as much as possible. So at least I can get to the point where I'm paying down the principal. Um, yeah. And uh, no, not incurring any more debt. No. Yeah. And one thing too, we didn't talk about is investing. I mean, right now with a car loan at 14%, don't even think about investing right now. I mean, the average return of the S&P 500 is, is 10%. So, and that comes with risk. Obviously the market goes up and down. And with a car loan at 14%, you shouldn't even think about investing. If someone tells you, hey, you can earn 20% or 15% you need to invest money instead of paying this car loan down, don't listen to them. It's just, it's not, it's not going to return risk-free, anything like that. So um, make sure that you are putting every single dollar towards just Don't worry about investing. But I, I mean, you should be able to get out of this. If you increase your income and you start figuring this out, it might be 24 months. It might be 18 months. It might be 30 months. It really depends on how, 
hard you go in cutting expenses and how hard you go in terms of increasing your income, typically you should be able to get out of this, I would project in under 24 months. If you really hustle and you really get after it. Um, yeah. Then when you do that, then you're going to have $700 a month not going towards a car payment and you're going to feel a lot more free. And then you can start putting that $700 a month going towards investing. So you can start building up a retirement account and right. doing things like that. But right now you are limited to limited your spending and limited to not even be able to think about investing um, because of this car payment, because of where your income compared to your expenses are. So, um, well, Elizabeth, last last question I have for you. What um what advice would you give to someone in a similar spot to you? What I'm sorry, what was the question? What advice would you give to someone in a similar position as you? Um, I would tell them that um it's not it's you're not you're not in, you know, there's somebody else who's probably worse off than you. Um, don't let this overtake you because it's gonna rob you of enjoying your life at this very moment, which you need to do. And don't you know when when you're spending any amount of money whatsoever make sure that it is a logical decision and not something that is based on your emotion at that very moment and if it's not something that was budgeted on your list then you need to walk away from it for 24 hours and see if it makes sense instead of being like oh 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 yeah that's right i forgot about that then let me get that and it's like no it doesn't matter if you're thinking about it again tomorrow then it was meant to be if not move on i i fully agree and i mean you understand and you have the knowledge to put this in place now it's about actually acting it and and living that out so and like i said it takes five seconds to do something and then it takes five years sometimes to recuperate from it so that's where i'm at right now yep and and i, I know you can do it you have the intelligence you said you're an organized person and it's a matter of just putting your mind to it and um, and sticking to the plan. So I, I really yes. appreciate you, Elizabeth, coming on today and being open and transparent. I hope that this was beneficial to you to kind Absolutely. of figure out some different items to improve and change your financial situation. Um, I would love to do a catch-up call with you in six months or 12 months from now and give everyone that's watching this an update on, on your current situation, where your income is, where your expenses are, what changes have been made over the last few months. Um, and I want to be a resource to you and to anyone that's watching as well. If you have financial questions you want to ask me, please email me, Elizabeth, or anyone watching this. I'm happy to give you advice on what I would do if I was in your shoes. Um, and I'll send you some resources after this show as well for you to learn and some of the top ones that I, I personally consume and um, watch myself. So um, if you're watching this and you learned something from Elizabeth's story, if you can relate to Elizabeth's story, or you want to help America get out of credit card debt, get out of car payments, please hit the like and subscribe button. It's the best way to help America learn about finances, talk about finances, and get out of debt. So, Elizabeth, thank you again for joining today, and uh, we'll chat soon. Sounds good. Have a great day.